right or wrong, successful entrepreneurs uh, are probably more highly compensated than uh, most doctors, lawyers, uh, teachers, civil servants. Um, society just, again, places right or wrong uh, a value on the things that get created. Uh, a lot of times those things grow out of a need, whether it's your own personal need, a challenge that you solve, like shaving, or any other challenge that gets solved. If, it's, if it has a wide enough need and a wide enough base, um, the creation of that solution gets recognized by a lot of people, and yes, eventually might uh, spur on competition. People are the same everywhere, no matter where they live, what country, race, it's really irrelevant. People have challenges, people have needs, and if you can solve those needs or provide uh, a better mousetrap, as they say, people will be the path to your door. When I was seven, I went to my cousin's birthday party. He was a year old, he was eight. And they hired a magician. I was fascinated, completely enthralled, transfixed by what this guy could do. I mean, he could create magic. And at that moment, I knew that that was something that I wanted to learn about. And I would take all the money that I might get from the holidays or from my birthday, and I would ask, my relatives, my parents, anyone, when they would say, what do I want for my birthday? I would say, I, I really want magic. I would either buy it for myself, or people would get me books, little magic kits. And I started to practice, and it was really it was just a hobby, like anybody else has a hobby. And I enjoyed performing those tricks. And I started originally doing it around the table for my family until they got sick of watching me do the same things over and over again. My next door neighbor, who was an entrepreneur, who happened to own a Hallmark card store in a local mall where we lived. And I convinced him to let me put up a poster to advertise myself. Where did I put it in the card store? Well, in the party section, because they sold paper goods and napkins and paper plates. And sure enough, I put it there, and I started to get phone calls. Now, I couldn't charge very much. I didn't even know how much to charge. My first gig, I got $2. <laughs> but when you're eight, that's good, that's good money. You know, we talk about guerrilla marketing. Uh, the other term I'm sure you guys uh, may have heard of is viral marketing. Right? Viral marketing is um, uh, most easily translated as word of mouth. A good experience that somebody has or somebody hears about is really one of the best ways uh, to grow business. People see through uh, potentially false claims of, of traditional advertising. And when you get a recommendation from a friend or you ask a family member for a referral on a particular thing and they make the referral to you, it, it, it resonates with you at a different, at, on a different level. My brother, Robert, who's four years older than I am, uh, also is very interested in magic, but he's more of a cerebral guy. We kind of got together and we started billing ourselves as two magicians for the price of one. And now the two of us working together, we were a little bit older, we charged a little bit more money. And uh, over the years, I went from $2, and now I was up to $150. A business partner, potentially, is someone you're actually gonna see and spend more time with than your life partner. So um, finding a good partner is not an easy thing, but there are advantages, um, potentially, if you can find one. The best partnerships tend to be where you can share a common vision and a common goal, but yet each of you has different strengths that you bring to the table. But uh, that was the beginning of, uh, of, of my partnership with, with my brother. And we would come in and we would do a show. And it was a great show. And we were young and dynamic and energetic. And we decided that we, when we would be hired to work at a party, now they weren't necessarily just kitty parties anymore, but they were bigger events. The show was getting bigger, and we realized that there was a really kind of cool need for interesting entertainment. And so people always have had this need and desire to escape everyday reality and to be entertained. Because at the end of the day, any business, it doesn't really matter what your business, what, what it is that you're choosing to do, businesses are all pretty much the same whether it's personnel or staffing or physical plant, meaning your store, your warehouse. Every business, no matter what it is, has all of those steps in between. But at the end of the day, you've got to create the product and you've got to get the product out there. 
At 16, we didn't necessarily articulate it in those terms, but that's really the energy that we were kind of checking into. So we expanded the show, and the show became more popular. We added costumes to the show. We added dancers to the show. And the, the more that we did, the more we realized that people enjoyed what we did, and the more they were willing to pay for it, because it was something that got you excited, something that you were really um, you know, turned on by, and you felt that that was something and that was what we realized was happening. The bigger and the more creative we would make our shows and make our entertainment, the more people were willing to pay. Slowly but surely, we were getting to the point where uh, we were growing. We were working still at that point out of um, my mother's basement. That's really where we started storing our equipment and our costumes. And it got to the point where we really just couldn't stay there anymore. But by the time I was 16 and my brother was um, 20, we took our first space, we took our first warehouse. It's about 950 square feet. And now I was faced with what to do with my education. Because by this point, the business had grown to believe it or not, we're close to doing about six figures. We were, we were, we were taking in a gross of about $100,000 by the time I was 16 and my brother was 20. 